Okay, today we're going to talk about variables in Visual Basic. This is from Standard 5, Understand Variables and Naming Conventions in Indicator 5.01. So, variables. We learned about them in Algebra 1 class. Most of you have had Algebra 1. And we're going to talk about them again here. So, remember in Algebra 1 we had X and Y, most commonly, which were used in equations x plus 4 equals 10 so in this case obviously x is 6 that's our algebra 1 definition of a variable well in programming we have variables as well a variable is simply a place a named place in computer memory that holds a value now that value can be determined by the end user who gives the program input or you the coder who supplies the value of the variable either hard code which means you actually write it in the code or from some other means so here's four examples of variables and we will talk about this naming here str and int what that means here in just a moment alright so to use a variable we have to declare it we can't just use it in the code without declaring it so this tells the the computer the name we're going to use so we can refer to it by name later and it also gives it a data type a data type tells the computer what type of value to expect integer string which is text a character a b c d whatever so using the wrong data type causes errors so declaring the right data type is important so we can't declare a data type of integer and then put apple in as a value. That will cause problems. Apple is not an integer. Obviously, it's a string. Okay, so common data types in Visual Basic. Integer, string, float, double, decimal, char, which is short for character, and boolean. Boolean only has two values, true or false. This will become important in our later discussion of decision-making structures if statements alright so the uh, syntax for declaring a variable starts with the keyword dim then we have the name of the variable then we have the as keyword and then we have the data type all four of those elements are required to properly declare a variable dim variable name as data type so variable names should be descriptive and describe their purpose. So integer grade, string name, decimal tax rate, double total sales. So we don't capitalize the data type, which is a three character abbreviation, but we do capitalize the first letter of each word thereafter. Now variable names cannot start with a number or contain any spaces. Variable names must be a single single word. There cannot be any spaces in a variable name. If we want to use spaces we can use the underscore character. Alright, so common data types here listed again with their abbreviations and this is Hungarian notation and this is the naming conventions we will be using in this class. So we have int str, flt, dbl, and so on. Three or four character abbreviations. You might also see char abbreviated as c, h, r, and boolean as b, o, l. Some people prefer to use pure Hungarian notation which is everything is three character abbreviations. Alright, after we declare a value we give it a value we give it a value of the assignment operator which is an equal sign so as you see here we can we can assign it directly in the dim statement now doing it this way we can only declare one variable per line if we don't give it a value initially we can declare multiple value variables of the same data type on the same line by separating with commas dim int number comma int number one comma int number two as integer um, and then we would give them values like this variable name equals and a value so variables can be assigned values 
like numbers or strings. This is what I was referring to as hard coding. Or it can be assigned from other sources. Pull from a text box or pull from a label or so on. All right, some rules for variables. If it's a string or a character, it must be in quotes. Notice here is a string variable, and here's a character variable. And notice the values are in quotes. Now, we do not enclose numbers in quotes when using a number data type. So if I have int grade equals 62, I do not put that in quotes. However, if I have str grade equals 62, I still put it in quotes. A string data type requires quotes, whether it's numbers or letters. All right, so only a number data type can be used in calculations. I can't add a plus b if those are strings I can't add them together and expect a calculation however I can add them together combine them and this is called concatenation now in DB the concatenation operator is an ampersand so this uh, variable here str data the value of it's going to be the string this is some data and the value of the variable int num and this is a number so if int num is 7 this statement would read this is some data 7 and this is a number so let's talk about scope for a second because this is important variables only exist in the scope they're defined in so if I define a variable in a, in a certain scope it can only be used in a scope or a scope below it. So cannot be called from outside that scope. That's true, but that might be a little misleading. If I declared it local here, the variable can be used in local or procedural. It cannot be used global. Now, there are three different types. Global can be used anywhere in the program, any sub procedure, any module, any place. Local is only in the sub or functions declared in. Procedural can only be used within an if statement or loop, the block of code it is uh, declared in. So global variables are declared at the top of the program right under public class, form one, or whatever your form is named. This is discouraged. We only want to use global variables if there's absolutely no other way to do it. Global variables invite problems or issues into your code and can make your code exploitable by hackers. In fact, as you see here, VB only, C Sharp does not even support global variables because of those problems. Now, we want to, we have values now, we've done some calculations in our variables, we want to output, we want to output the value to a text box, to a label, or whatnot. But frequently we have to format output. If we said, if we said, 6 divided by 7. We're going to get some kind of ridiculously long number if we did this calculation. Or let's just say, let's make it better. 46 divided by 7. I don't know what that is, but we're going to get some ridiculously long number. We probably want to format that value. So we do that using to string. This accomplishes two things. One, it converts the data from whatever type it is, in this case decimal, to the data type of string. Then it applies this format. The format here will make it currency. So let's talk about this format real quick. And this puts it, this takes this variable, converts it to a string, and then assigns it to the text property of a label called LBL total. Now this data type, as I said, makes it currency. So we're going to, and all formats go in quotes. So we're going to add a dollar sign. These are the actual numbers in the total. There's only two number signs here listed, but it will show as many numbers as there are. And then this tells the format we want to use two decimal places. So if I just had point zero, there'd be one. If I just had the two number signs, there'd be no decimal places. The, the, um, 
compiler would round the number. All right, we can also accomplish the same thing in VB with the format function. Notice here it looks a little different. Format, we have the variable and then the format. Accomplishes the same thing. However, this to string can be formatted or can be used in other languages. So this is our preferred method of formatting data. Now, we can use labels, text boxes, list boxes, and other things to output data, but we can also use a message box. A message box pops up a box on the screen and stops the execution of the program until the user clicks OK. Just a message. So, for example, we can say, please enter the numbers for sales and the tax rate. We can give the user a message if they produced bad input. Or, we can give them a message and notice concatenation going on here. We can do the same thing. We can have text. We can have some text, a variable, some more text, another variable, and some more text. Remember the text will be displayed as written. The variables, the value of that variable will be displayed. All right, so we want to write a program that asks a user for their name and age, store this information in two variables, and use a message box to put the information back to the user. We want to use a button to start the program. So let's take a look here. This is Visual Studio, and we have our two text boxes and our button. So I've already got some code here. I already got some code here and let's declare our two variables so dim int age as integer equals zero dim str name as string equals two quotes just makes it an empty string no actual data now we have a text box called txt age and a text box called txt name so str name equals txt name dot text that one's easy they're inputting a text into a text box, which is a data type string, and we're putting it into a string data type, so we don't have to do any special conversions or anything like that. Now, for the int age, we talked about this in, in standard three, we want to do a try and catch. We want to make sure the user actually entered a number, not like apple, banana, Chris. We want to make sure they actually entered a number, so to do that, we use a try catch so we're going to try what we're going to try is is int age equals convert to and we'll use int 32 and then we're going to give it the name the actual name of the text box oops text age dot text all right so we're going to try to do this conversion now if they entered apple obviously that can't be converted to an integer so it's going to error out so down here in the catch if we ca if we catch the exception what are we going to tell them well we're going to tell them please oops please enter a number now we're going to type exit sub what this does is it exits the block of code that we're currently in which is the click event of the button the reason to do this is, is outside of the try, we're going to put another message box. This message box will display regardless of what happened in the try. So we would get an error, please enter a number, then the other message box would pop up with our output, but if we didn't enter a number, the message box would display bad data. So exit sub prevents that, this second message box from displaying any data. So I've got this in here already. Let me copy this in here, make it a little easier so you won't have to watch me type it out. All right, so message box show, and there we have your name is, and a, and a variable, you are, and a variable. Notice, there, notice the spaces here. 
Notice the spaces I've put in. Otherwise, without the spaces, you would just cram it all together. It's concatenation, just combines the strings together. Does not, it's not looking to make it a sentence. So you have to put in the spaces. All right, let's run this program. Move this over here so we can see it. Now, obviously, this is a real program. We'd have labels on here to label our text boxes, but this is just a sample. So let's say Beth, and let's say Beth is 21. So, as you see, your name is Beth, you were 21 years old, pops up in the message box. Now, let's type Beth twice. Notice, we now get the error because we created the exception, and now the program, instead of displaying the second message box because of the exit sub, exits the code, block code and goes back and waits for us to fix our problem. All right. So sometimes we need to use a variable in different ways. We want a variable that can hold its value beyond the end of the program. Basically, if I run a block of code, at the end of that block of code, those vari any variables at the end are automatically purged of their data to remove from memory to free up memory. Or maybe I want to use a variable whose value cannot be changed by the program. I declare a value, that value stays. So a static variable is one that holds its value as long as the program's running, not just in between button clicks. So as long as the program's running, that variable will hold its data even if I click the even if I initiate a button click event multiple times. A constant is a variable that cannot be changed. So here's how we declare those variables. Instead of using dim, we use these keywords, static and c-o-n-s-t. So we replace dim with those keywords. So in this lesson we learned about variables and how to use them and you'll find additional activities and sample programs in the unpacked content.